Our Old Testament today comes from the Psalms 20, verses 7 and 8. Psalm 20, verses 7 and 8. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Our next reading is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Help us to take what we learned today and to use it this week that we may honor and glorify you. We thank you for your word that is our guide, that shows us how and live and to encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone is trusting in something, even if they don't recognize the fact They rely on their own wisdom, their own resources, their own judgment. Trust is only as good or as solid as the basis of that trust. In Proverbs, written by Solomon, who was arguably the wisest man that ever lived, so you know his advice is sound. Solomon advises us to trust in the Lord with all, all our heart. But what does that mean? As I said, trust is only as solid as the object of that trust. Our trust is in the nature and the character of God. Our trust is in, if you will, his personality. In the Bible, The heart symbolizes the entire being. Soul, mind, emotions, intellect, totally in everything. To trust in the Lord means to rely totally on his promises, his wisdom, his power, and his love. Trusting is not always easy. Um, The evil one always seems to whisper, Did God really say? Did he really do this? It was the same lie, or half-truth in this case, that he told Adam and Eve, and people have been believing it ever since. However, the Lord's Lord's track record is perfect. In 47 years, I found that he has never failed me. I failed him many times, but he has never failed me. We are not to lean on our own understanding. Our understanding of things is so pitifully limited, but not God's. Rich Hopkins used to say it's like looking at a rug. We look at the backside and we see the knots and the tangles and all that ugly stuff. But God sees the front, the the masterpiece, the, the artwork. Our understanding is tainted by sin and self what we want, what we have, what we need. The writer of Proverbs, Solomon, also tells us there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end leads to death. Trusting in in the Lord means for us eternal life 
and, and a perpetual joy. Thirdly, we are to acknowledge him, God, but not only to acknowledge him, but recognize his, and affirm, and that's the key word, affirm, his power, his holiness, his righteousness, his wisdom, and his sovereignty, the, the, the right of him to do as he pleases, when he pleases. We are, again, reliant on, we are trusting in his love, which, as the Corinthian says, never fails. Paul tells us in Romans that since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine qualities have been made known so that men are without excuse. We have no excuse for not trusting God. In Numbers, Moses tells us, God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of a man, that he should change his mind. Does he not speak, then act? Does he not promise and not fulfill? Often, especially in the Old Testament, uh, God, and in the New Testament, Jesus is referred to as a rock. A rock is a solid, firm foundation. And as Jesus said in the parable, the wind and the waves beat against that house and it did not fall. So if the house of our lives is built on, on the words of Jesus Christ, we have no reason to worry. We have no reason to, fa to, to fail, to fear. He will direct your paths. God will align our thoughts, motives, and wills with his. Speaking through the prophet Isaiah, God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as high as the, heaven, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than yours. He will make a way through all over and around and all obstacles obstacles that stand between us and our spiritual maturity. God made a way through the Red Sea for his people. God led them through 40 years in the wilderness. And he will see us through the wilderness that is this life and bring us safely home. Life's journeys, as I have found, I'm sure if you haven't, you will find, find out eventually, is filled with twists and turns many detours, many bumps, many hills, many detours. Life is filled with crossroads. We can become confused. We can wander. We can always question what, where to go. go. We all need a road map. The Bible is the only reliable road map we have. If you were going someplace like California or Oregon or even, even Canada, you would use a road map or today in this a GPS. So why not use God's road map on your journey through this life? 